All right, let's find out if Eric is going to be fine today or if he's going to have a panic attack because the medication sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. We'll find out after our sponsor. Kick Depression. Cat. Oh. I, I feel guess like it's a better sponsor. Part of me feels like this is going to be not a good idea because what's going to happen now is like I'm going to notice in editing this video like all the chocolatey going on but you know when you get like five of these for christmas it's like people are trying to tell you like are you fat or do you want to get diabetes and with that everybody welcome to the rask hi everyone how are we doing my name's eric that guy's brian i think thank you for taking the reins on that while i had chocolate in my mouth episode nine mm. Chocolatey Ralph, nice. Mm hmm. So, it's the new year. We're here. Holy moly, guacamole, right? Yeah, I can't believe I survived. Can you? Anyways, um, <laughs> you look so serious right now. I like, can be if I need to be. Like, I'm like, just, just you look like you look like so focused. You're like, I'm just uh, organizing which one, which uh, which of these things I want to talk about more. So, mm -hmm. so what things? Why don't you talk about it, Brian, a little bit while I finish this up? Okay, so I'll stop eating my chocolate now because I want to make sure that I can eat my chocolate when you're talking a bunch. So, and it's a new year. Eric had a really interesting idea, which we're going to segue into another conversation, but we'll get to that part in a little bit. So Eric thought it'd be interesting to talk about backlogs. Obviously, backlogs being a whole list full of shit that you need to catch up on. Uh, I definitely have it with like movies and music. But let's be honest, video game backlogs are probably the most pain in the ass. Because movies, I feel like are easy to catch up on. Albums, I, I always am catching up on. Video games, every video game is so different. A lot There's of video games are longer. You're depending on, like, do you want to try and get all the trophies or achievements? Do you just want to beat the story? Are you going for, like, what, what are you here for, right? And video game backlogs, I think, if you've watched any of our game of the year, I think it's the first one is out by this point. We talked about in our Game of the Year cast how a lot of the games that, like, we have to go back to because we're older now and we're starting to learn, like, oh, this was a game that we should have played. Let's go back to it and let's go. So it's like a lot of times we're, like, having to go back. And then on top of it, we have a lot of games that we need to catch up on now. And so with, like, you know, streaming services with like Game Pass, I know PlayStation Plus Pro, Premium, whatever it is now. Um, and like I know with Switch, it has it, but also like going back and like buying consoles, you know, you can go to secondhand shops, um, you can get stuff on eBay. Um, and so I guess I guess what we should do is we should just have a little quick conversation about our backlogs before we get into them um, in terms mm -hmm. of like how long have we had our lists and where are we not now? Because I think it's an interesting conversation to talk about like before COVID, then when COVID initially happened and then where we're at now, because honestly, up until COVID, I don't think I would be as far ahead as I would have been without COVID. I replayed a bunch of games. I played new games, but you know, I could only do so much thanks to COVID because mm -hmm. i went to work earlier than a lot of people did you know so that was only like two months mm -hmm. for me um i could physically show you folks uh some of my backlog so if we're gonna move up a little bit and then we're just gonna do a, do a little bit of this this is the physical backlog right here. The saboteur. That's so funny. That. Uh, and then I've got 
plenty of games on Game Pass that I have downloaded and just haven't touched yet or I haven't finished yet. You know, because either dumb brain says, I'll get back to it later and I never get back to it, or, uh, you know, I'll start this eventually, but then I'll, I play something Dead like by Dead by Daylight. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, don't even think about playing any other games because I'm like, I'm going to play until I get my daily done. And then the daily takes 17 years, it feels like. <laughs> so, okay. So then my question is, so I'm kind of with you. You know, when we were younger, you know, we'd play games, do this, we'd catch up. COVID happens, right? And, I, you know, you and I kind of have the same sentiment. I was able to stay off of work a little longer. But during COVID, I beat every God of War game. On the original, like I didn't get, I I didn't get to um, the twenty eighteen one yet, but like I beat all the God of War games. I beat there were some Remedy games I beat. I played and beat at least like eleven to twelve games, like during that time. And I was like, oh, here we go, here we go. And then like since then, it's been kind of dwindling. And then I'd be adding more, and that's my big issue. That's is it is it. Are we at a day and age where, like, our attention span slash just us being adults? Because, again, we're going to talk about it when we get to our game of the years in, like, our late middle school, early high school when, like, Eric and I literally did nothing but play video games. And we could catch up on, like, anything and everything. I think a lot of the issue is, back in the day, you'd get games for gifts. You didn't have to worry about paying for games yourself. It's just, oh, my parents are going to buy them for me, right? If you were, you know, if you're lucky and spoiled like that. So you wouldn't have to worry about it. You would always have all this free time. Now, you have to get games yourself if you're not getting it on a subscription. And I think a lot of it is just fitting it into a time frame. Because again, like you and I... I've started to kind of become a little bit of a, like I've been getting into video games a lot more and I've been going through video games a lot more and a lot quick like quicker than late than usual but I'm kind of becoming fond of the games that like like you said you joke about we were just joking about Dead by Daylight that's kind of like me though now I don't go and play multiplayer games like that but a lot of the times lately I'll just jump on and play Forza I'll play Vampire Survivors. I'll play, like, these games that, like, there's achievements, there's accomplishments, but it's not, like, a story or, like, the, it's just, okay. Like, they're not games that I'm, like, I need to beat them. It's just games I like to play that you can beat, but they're not, like, Control. They're not Hellblade. They're not God of War. They're not Horizon, you know? They're not games that you sit down and go, like, I'm going to beat them. They're games that there's accomplishments and goals. But, you know, like you said, there's games that you're like, oh, yeah, Dead by Daylight. I want to play a little bit. Oh, I want to play whatever. I'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow goes by. Oh, I want to do my day. Oh, okay, I don't want to do that. So I guess just like our mentalities change. I think it gets more difficult as you get older. My backlog I don't have with me like in physical like that. Cause I'll say, I think my physically is probably worse than yours. Oh my God. But, but I have a list on my computer, which obviously we'll get into. Like, I think we'll kind of just go through our list, which I'll wait to talk about. But yeah, I think backlogs again, I know with you, like when we have conversations and you know how, like I try to watch as many movies as I can. I listen to as much music. I can put an album on. And I can play a game like a Forza or like a Vampire Survivors where I just play it. I can listen. That's what I've been doing with like my classic albums throughout the year. I put on the classic album I need to review. I listen to it. I play a game. When I have to do my in-depth analysis, I do it. But at first, I just let it rock because I don't have to worry. Like sometimes I sit down and just fully engage. Sometimes I don't need to. Movies, mm -hmm. I could take that time for those two hours to sit and watch a movie. Video games are, like, a lot more dedication, and I don't think I have as much of a willpower because, honestly, unless it's something that I'm so engaged with or something I genuinely love, I think at, like, two hours, I get anxious, 
I get uncomfortable. I'm like, I can't do this for more than two hours. I need to go do something now. When I was a kid, I could sit in front of that TV for eight hours and get through like Batman Arkham City in a city. But like, I can't do that anymore. So I think that's part of how difficult it is. And then like you said, you get screwed because then games come out that you want to play and then you add that to the list. And you add that to the list. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this game that came out 10 years ago, I want to play. But also Elden Ring just came out. I want to put that on the list. So it's so yeah. hard too when new releases come out because then you're like, well, do I prioritize finishing the game that I've been focusing on? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to play this game that I've been waiting for it to come out and start it right away and push that one back? And it's like, fuck me. Because I know that's going to already happen in January. <laughs> This month, baby, got fucking Fire Emblem for myself, and Brian's got Dead Space for himself, mm -hmm. which is so sad that, you know, my gift is going to come really late for him, as in never. <laughs> Listen, I don't have $276 to spare, plus tax. Sell your body. Get an OnlyFans account. <laughs> Which order? Do I sell my body first and open up an OnlyFans account? We'll discuss that after the video. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess I'll go into it first because uh, yes. Brian's on a chocolate break for a bit. I was going to say, I'm almost done with my Kit Kat, so if I can finish this while you're talking, I'll be good for the rest of the video. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just going to go through a couple of these physical ones that are like Hey, I need to play them, but not much of an explanation for them. The other stack that I have is more like, hey, like I'm actually really interested in playing these, but I don't know why I'm not playing them. Mm -hmm. um, so for my short list, uh, Zelda Skyward Sword HD, I played it a little bit, just haven't gotten back to it, hopefully soon. Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope, like the first one, this one seems like it'll be a good time at the very least. I'll play it eventually, you know. Luigi's Mansion 3. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while. Uh, it seems fun. Uh, it's just another Luigi's Mansion. I know I'll probably get to it. Same with Jay's. Yoshi's. I don't think she's finished Luigi's Mansion yet. Yoshi's Craft World. Hey, it's Yoshi. Seems like fun. I'll get to it eventually. Doki Doki Literature Cub. This is literally just, you know, one of those... Uh, text games but also it's got that interesting fucking psychological horror plot so it'll just take me some time you know i can just put the autoplay on if i need to press a button a couple times and you don't really do much actions otherwise uh ghost of tsushima uh, i just wanted to help out sucker punch a little bit uh but also this one i kind of want to play on a ps5 because i think it would look much better so kind of waiting for that Final Fantasy VII Remake, uh, again, same case. I think this is going to look much better on a PS5, but I am excited to play it. Same with this final case, Resident Evil Village. Prefer to play it on a PS5. Get to it eventually. Would look probably much better. Now, the games that I have a little more details of, probably add a couple more sentences, and then I'll go through some of my Game Pass games. Uh, Metroid Fusion. It's very investing, very fun. I have played a lot of it, and then I just stopped playing it, and I don't know why, because I was really invested with it. Uh, definitely probably the best Metroid game I've played, uh, especially since even though Dread came out, and I love Dread, this one is really strong and still stands out, but I haven't beaten it for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei Five. I have played it a bit, got through about like five or six hours, which this is takes like, you know, it's an RPG, but probably takes like a hundred hours, something like that. Something about it just stands out to me that I'm like, I'm not wanting really to want to play it. I don't know if it's the combat. I don't know if it's the world setting. Um, but, you know, I've been waiting for this game since it was announced for the Switch. And then... I'm just like, I'll get back to this later. And I just haven't played it since, but I want to. 
They've got the steel book for God's sakes. Don't know why. This one I have to be prepared for. All right. You better wear that for the rest of the video now. I will. Uh, <laughs> Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This came out the, uh, the past year. It's a lot of fun. Maybe if I beat it, it could be my game of the year for last year. I don't know. I played it with my roommate. We did some co-op with it. It was a lot of fun. And then uh, we said, okay, we'll play later. And then we just never got back to it. And I don't really want to play by myself because playing it with my, my roommate was a lot of fun. Uh, but hopefully soon. Uh, Near Automata. Uh, so I had this on Game Pass and I played it a lot. Uh, doing a lot of side quests and things like that because that's the whole point of Nier is to you need to do everything if you want like real the the better endings and things like that but then they took it off the game pass and so all my progress was pretty much lost and I was like well the switch version is coming out it's only forty dollars sure it's not as advanced as you know the Xbox version but hey I can take it on the go and from what I've been hearing the frame rate has been steady and things like that but it's also the issue of, do I really want to restart it now? That's my that's, thing. Like, that's so funny. Like, you had those couple games. It's on PS4. I want to play it on PS5. It's on PS4. It's on PS5. Near. And I don't care if it looks like this. I'll play it on the <laughs> It's it's just, a, it's just stuck at 30 frames per second. That's all. Okay. Whatever. That's not too bad. That's the only issue. But, like, the graphics still stay steady. And uh, the frame rate... Uh, according to people online, doesn't really dip whatsoever, which is really good. That's what I expect for a Switch port, you know. Sure, lose frame rate, but there we go. All right, so these two are kind of a package deal. World's End with you, and then Neo, the World's End with you. Now, the reason why I bring both these up is because I've been, I've played this game. I played this game a bit. I was really into it. The battle system's fun, you know. The world's interesting. This Reaper Games is so fucking weird. And then I stopped playing it. And I don't know why I stopped playing it. Because I'm like, I actually am slightly invested in this. <coughs> and now I can't play this one because it's like, well, shouldn't I, you know, beat this game first before I get invested into this one? Like, come on. So, you know, we got to beat one to play the other. This one's interesting because I haven't played this one since release because of just how bad the state is. Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, but now that a lot of the issues have been fixed. Idris and... Alba! Well, that's on the PS5. Oh. Remember they... yes. Yeah, they stopped. Well... It's not even like I would want to play it because I would have to upgrade it. And I'm sure the save file would go through. It's only what, like 10 bucks more to get the upgraded version. If I got a PS5, whatever. I still want to, I could just play this on PS4 because they fixed a lot of the issues. I can, I can play it on Xbox. And the Series X. AK, I could play it on the toaster known as the Xbox One, where it probably looks like footage from the Ascent <laughs> from you. <laughs> Anyway, um, Edge Runners make a big spike back into this game, and like, sure, it's not the best game that came out in this was 2020. My God, uh, it's like it's but, like Star Wars Battlefront Two, where you feel like right now you thought it was a 2022 game with how much they've been working on it, but it's not. It came out originally in that year. It's crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. I love the over 200 awards on this too. Like for what? For the presentation? For being uh high most anticipated score? game for nine years. <laughs> yeah, but I want to get back into it because I stopped when Keanu showed up and that's when I felt the game was really picking up. So it is what it is. I want to get back into it though at some point. Borderlands 3. Now, this is probably a little bit of a shock to Brian, um, knowing how much I love Borderlands and Borderlands 2. I bought this. 
I said, my room and I, hey, we should play co-op in this because they still have split screen co-op for this game. They also have online co-op, of course. Haven't touch, touched it since I bought it. And I don't know why I just was like, I got this for pretty cheap. I got this for like 10 bucks uh, a couple years ago. And then I said, hmm, I'll play it another day. Hmm, I'm not in the mood for this Borderlands. I don't know why, because I hear there's good things about this game, but that's what I'm like. Will it? Will it? Will it be better than my my time with Borderlands Two? Because Brian knows I spent a shit ton of time on Borderlands Two. Oh yes, yeah, loved that game. Probably would talk about it in the future. Maybe <laughs> this is this is a a big one for because uh, you know its kind of sequel was announced because. It's a working tile, but that's stranding. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just got this pretty recently, actually. Thanks, Black Friday. But it's just so hard to wanting to play it because I already know, like that first like ten hours is mainly doing the package delivery simulator game, and you're kind of just like, do I really want to play that for ten hours and then? get really invested into the story i don't know but also like it's kojima what can you expect you know craziness craziness uh this one is just recent but i don't know why i haven't jumped into it especially how much i really do enjoy uh the game from 2018 but god of war ragnarok again I had a great time with God of War 2018. That's also a game that I played for a bit, stopped, and then a couple months later, I went back to. Uh, I guess this might be the case with Ragnarok. I probably will jump into it in a while and then play it for a bit and then stop for like two or three months and then get back into it and probably beat it. Mainly because I just want to... I want to experience... Uh, what the sequel has to offer, you know, especially since it was the winner of the most game awards and the uh has the pristine honor of its voice actor having the longest speech in a award show history mm-hmm. of seven and a half, seven almost eight minutes. Yeah, insane. My last two physically, I want to talk about really quickly. Metal Gear Revising Vengeance. This comes from Platinum and Kojima. This game just looks stupid and fun. And I don't know why I haven't popped it in yet. I... And it's and you know what's so annoying about this game? I remember when it first got announced, it looked so cool. And then it it went dark. And then when they showed it again, it looked completely different. Because originally it was supposed to be a lot more precise. It looked a lot cleaner. And then it changed into just like a crazy hackum slash game. Mm-hmm. And it was like, huh? <laughs> that was more because uh the funding Konami was giving Kojima at the time was pretty shit. So he went out to Platinum and they worked together to make this game happen. Because Platinum will work with anyone, except probably not Microsoft ever again. Because <laughs> Please, we want to do scale bound. Let us do this scale is, bound. This is the game we were wanting to do. Cool headphone wearing dudes riding on dragons. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's like, finally, you notice this one. We'll talk about it a little bit. The Saboteur. This is a game that I've been really interested in since my middle school, high school days of playing games. I don't know it, why this stuck out to me. Yeah. You play. Uh- I was gonna say, I was gonna say real quick, isn't this like the last game pandemic made? This was the last pandemic before they went under, or they got like they got like morphed into something, or they shut I don't know. They shut down. Pandemic shut down. It was another studio that EA shut down that year too. I can't remember. But this was the last pandemic pandemic shut down. (laughs) Ha ha. Get it? Um real life. (laughs) Yeah. Um I don't know. It just seemed interesting for the fact that, like, you start out in black and white in fucking Nazi France. And then, like, when you restore an area, like, it becomes color. And you're like, wow, this is really cool. 
But also, this is the game known for, uh, let me pull it out. What, the DLC where you can go to the titty bar? Yep. <laughs> the titty bar. I remember bar, the that. Show. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, it is officially unaccessible to access because, first of all, the game is delisted off Damn. all platforms. So Xbox 360 and PS3. I don't know if it's backwards compatible. I probably not with the Xbox One. So I have to play it on my 360 if I want to play it. But also I can't get the boobies because this code expired, first of all, in December 31st, 2010. Also, this was a used copy I got from GameStop that I got a couple years ago. So also apparently there was a mobile game. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I have the manual too. I got the full package with this, surprisingly enough, for uh, for GameStop. I remember uh, liking it, but I remember I was underwhelmed because it just felt like Pandemic was really big into, like, those open world, like, mercenaries. They did those games, and I know the Saboteur was, like, a really cool idea. I just felt like gameplay-wise and the way it was structured, it just felt very repetitive. And not very rewarding. But I agree. Like, I remember the game when it got announced, it looked so cool and interesting. Um, it's been a long time because I did play it and I did beat it. I don't own it anymore. But I remember that was back in the day where, like, I wanted to play that. And then, like, Prototype. Remember prototype. those games? That was, the, that was the other studio that went under. The Prototype okay. studio. Okay. Um, anyway. Uh, just a quick rundown of my Game Pass games that I need to finish. Yes. Uh, starting off in order of gigabytes, not in alphabetical. Uh, nobody wants to save the world. You know, we did that playthrough on that channel here. Yeah. I have Great struggled game. to come back to that game for some reason, though. I don't know why. But you know what? Struggling. You know what? This is what I'll do. After we're done shooting, I'm going to play it with you. Okay. Okay. Sounds Possibly. good. Possibly. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put these two together because they're pretty much like in the same vein, but Inside and Somerville. Okay. Uh, um, I, I only played Inside a little bit for that uh, weekly challenge. Walking for, uh, a bunch. <laughs> yeah, walking 500 feet or something. Um, I'll get to it. I know it's it's short. The Both the games are short mm -hmm. and pretty easy to go through. Um I've got Death's Door. I heard a lot of good things about that when it came out in 2020. It was one of those games that was like, it's not as good as Hades, but it's one of those games that's pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> I've got, I'm not going to say Power Wash Simulator because <laughs> that's a game you could just put on whenever. Yeah. It's not a game that I have to go back to, but yeah, not really invested in a sense. Uh, one game that I was really interested in when EA announced it, Lost in Random. It was so interesting of a concept. It was like these dice character you follows you around, things like that. You're like, oh, this is cool. What's up? Uh, quickly, uh, Fable. I've started it. Um, I've stopped playing it for a bit just to focus on other things, but I would like to get back to it. I actually am enjoying my experience. I do have some complications with the game, but it was the first one of the series. Fable 2 is still probably my preferred one over all the Fable games. Uh, Weird West, I started playing that. Thought it was an interesting top-down like RPG style of game about cowboys and cowgirls. I don't know why, I just haven't gotten back to it yet. Uh, the Ascent, Brian and I are probably going to work through at some point, so I'm not worried about that one, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Uh, Alien Isolation has been sitting on here for so long, and <laughs> I've been waiting to play it, and I just haven't. It's not even that long of a game. It's like seven hours, um, but I've just been wanting to play it. I think and they I said just, they're going to try and make a sequel for it, too. They've been trying to make a sequel to it for fucking years. The closest they've gotten is a fucking mobile game that's like a spinoff of, that's like a playoff of Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, jeez. And it's the same uh, character from Alien Isolation, but not related to Alien Isolation, which I find weird. Uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising. I started playing that from Ubisoft because it dropped on Game Pass. And I played it. 
because there was a weekly. And then I started to keep playing and I was like, this is actually really cool. It's got an interesting concept. Uh, the world seems really cool. This Greek mythology seems invested. I know a couple things about it uh, with like what some of the gods get turned into from this chaos being. And then I just haven't played it since. It's been probably about a month. Um, but I would like to get back into it. I just know it's going to take some time because it's in that breath of a wild style. Mm -hmm. um, it takes two. I want to jump into it, but I need a friend, <laughs> you know? I'll play through it again. I'd love to play through it again. Um, Psychonauts 2. I want to replay the first Psychonauts first before I go into Psychonauts 2. Just get a refresh in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually. Uh, Dishonored. And I'm going to throw the Evil Within as well in there. Two Bethesda games from different companies within Bethesda. I just have it. I'm also going to throw Prey in there as well because I see it up there as well. Again, all different games under the Bethesda label. I've played a bit of and I just haven't come back to. It is what it is. Prey is definitely like, I remember when it got announced and people were excited because it was Prey, but it wasn't Prey. Honestly, yeah, Prey, they wanted they wanted that Prey where you were the bounty hunter version yeah i remember that i honestly i think that game got very unwanted bad reviews i think it is definitely a better game than death loop so <laughs> um titanfall 2 i want to jump into the story mode at least for that oh yeah it, that's yeah, a good one i heard the story is actually surprisingly good but Respawn it was their it was their uh what's the thing it was their test before they got star wars <laughs> no literally because i've got i played fall in order i played that when it dropped and uh that was a great time a really good story and you're thinking from the studio that mainly does like shooters because they do apex mm -hmm. legends um but no like I, the story was great so i'm very interested in the story of titanfall 2 because i heard great things about it it's just you and your uh, your mech being buddies, apparently. Uh, my final one I want to bring up, because it's the last one that it seems like I want to talk about, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It dropped on Game Pass earlier this year. I jumped into it. It looks amazing. I feel like it could be a different enough of a style for Assassin's Creed that I would want to be invested in it. And I haven't played it since I booted it up for a weekly. But I was like, cool um but i'm fortunate uh that's all the games that i really had to go through i know it was a lot but you know i just i want to play these games but then like trying to figure out which ones you want to play is like what the fuck <laughs> well we will when i'm done with my list you know wink wink we'll get to we'll get to that part uh that you're so uh stressed about um, I will say I am going to restructure my list a little bit because this list has been on my notes for like years and it's kind of messy and there's games on here that I haven't added, but in my head, I can think of like the Ascent is one, the Star Wars game is one. There's a couple games that I haven't officially put on here that I'm like, I want to get to it, but I just never added it. Um, right now, the game I'm actually working on is Indie Darling and a game that right now I'm on a part that literally made me so mad last night when I was trying to finish it. Tunic. Um, <laughs> it is, you know, it's you're playing Legend of Zelda, but you're a fox. Basically the game. It's gorgeous. I love the music, but it's also a big pain in the ass. Um, I played Crisis 2. Crisis 2 was big for us console gamers because the first one destroyed PC. So to get a sequel on a console, it was like, awesome. I want to play the first one. And then I never got to the third one. I thought the second one was great. I heard the first one. It looks a lot kind of like an old school Far Cry ripoff where you're on an island and doing whatever. And then Crisis 3 just looked like Crisis 2 with a bone arrow. So No, literally. that was It really, it really was. So, um, so there's that. Elden Ring I just got. For the holidays, that will be my when I, you know, start to trek down the newer games. I think that'll be the first Souls like game I'm gonna play though, because I hear that's probably one that or Sekiro are the best two to jump into. Sekiro is one of them. I will get to that too. Um, 
but there's that Stubbs the Zombie. I played this demo so much on the original Xbox. Hi, Mingling. And I got it on Xbox One. I'm really excited to play this. Like, I remember loving it so much, like just that little demo. And I'm really interested to see how the full game is. Uh, like you, Cyberpunk 2077, I played maybe the first hour and a half or two. I just like you, I was into it. And then I just said, I'll get back to it. Uh, Little Nightmares 1 and 2. These are games that looked very fascinating. I ended up getting the first one for like dirt cheap on PlayStation. And then the second one I still need to get. But I, I want to get one through uh, Xbox Live Gold. Oh, seriously? Yeah, that's pretty cool. I still um, haven't played it either, but yeah, it that's... looks it looks fascinating. I like these games that like like when you were talking about uh, Inside and Somerville, those are kinds of games that when I see I go, oh, those are cool. Or when I see games that look like um, Unravel, stuff like that, this kind of had that feel. I'm into that. Spider-Man Miles Morales, I don't know how I haven't played it yet, because I bought a PS5, that was one of the reasons why, and I need to play it before Spider-Man 2 comes out. See, I'm not buying that game until I get a PS5, so yeah. that's not on my list, because I don't own it, but once I get a PS5... Smart man. The... But also, I'm going to probably play the remaster first, because I'm dumb. And you want to see weird Peter Parker face? Yeah. <laughs> uh indigo proxy was a game that that was um what's th what's their name quantic dream That's quantic dream quantic dream again i played the demo it was super trippy never played it got it on ps4 for like dirt cheap really excited sekiro i already brought up last guardian the most hyped up disappointment game probably since duke nukem forever um uh i'm really excited to play that Quantum Conundrum. This is a game of part of the original team that did Portal. And they went to do this small indie game. It looks really cool. I got it. I think it was a Games for Gold or something like that. Like bat, like way back in the day. So that will be a fun afternoon. Uh, the Deus Ex games. Human Revolution, Mankind Divided. Uh, Human Revolution was a good time. Yeah, Human Revolution was the one that I heard a lot of really good things about. Uh, and, you know, Elias Tufexus seems like, you know, a cool guy. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. I bought this game for 20-something bucks on eBay, and then the game got flooded in my basement. The game's fine, oh. but the, the game case is flooded. So it, it That's broke my heart. That's a good game, heart. too. That's a so good game. I'm excited for that. Bloodborne. Again, another Souls-like game I want to get to. Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. Oh, God. Yep, I'm going to... Those might be ones that I won't get to. Uh, Wolf Among Us. I still need to finish that. The Walking Dead. I've only played Season 1 and Episode 1 of Season 2. So we got to get on that. Every Please. Kingdom Hearts game from the collection and Kingdom Hearts 3. I can't wait to really hate my life doing all that. Uh, there's a couple like this though, so I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, Gone Home is one of those like I've heard so many things about. I want to sit down and go through it. A uh, Tacoma is another good one too. That was the same studio. I'll add Tacoma to that list. I don't have it, but I'll add it there because those are games I've wanted to get to. Deadlight, which I don't know if you ever remember this game. It was on the 360. It was like you remember Shadow Complex? Yeah. It kind of looked like that style where it was like the back, like kind of Metroid style. And it was like a, a zombie post-apocalyptic game. And I got, it was again, a game with gold. I got, I think I got that with Super Meat Boy. And uh, it looked like a really cool game. Like it looked solid. Again, it's been on here for years. It's funny that it's just been on here. So maybe I'll get into it. and It'll just be a random fun time. Every Metal Gear game. I have the collection <laughs> and Metal Gear Solid 5. Again, will I hate my life? Probably. Uh, Gears of War 4 and 5, again, after Judgment. That was around the time where I wasn't playing video games like that. And honestly, Gears of War, you need to play with a friend. As Eric and I both know, we played through the... I don't... Did we play through every Gears of War game together? Yeah, and then 3, we tried to do it with 4 people, and then we stopped. And then, you know... 
as time goes on. Maybe we'll play Gears of War 4 and 5 at some point. That'll be random ones that we do. That'll be a bottom of the list once we can get to them. Uh, Detroit Become Human, obviously another Quantic Dream game, but I love the setting and it's, you know, exciting to see how it, you know, plays out and whatnot. Uh, every Dragon Age game, mainly the first two, because those were the two that I owned and I was like really wanting to get into. But, you know, Dragon Age 1 kind of was like, again, it was like Mass Effect to Mass Effect 2. The first one was super RPG and then the second one they were trying to make more of like a like, even though Mass Effect 2 is better than Dragon Age 2 from, you know, from what I could yeah. tell. But Dragon it was kind of, it's kind of the same comparison, but obviously Mass Effect 2 is much better. Um, Halo Wars 2, again, we were just talking about Halo. And as my hoodie shows, I've not played it. I think Halo Wars 1 is honestly underrated. I don't think it's that bad. I think it was a lot of fun. Uh, Fallout 4 DLC, everyone's favorite before they really did a great fallout game fallout 76 uh shadow of the colossus and ico again i feel like me saying that i should be shunned as a gamer but you know it is what it is there's a co-op game i've been wanting to play called chariot that looks really fun where it's like it's kind of like haze like games where you need two people you basically are taking, like, your dad died, and he's, like, a king, and you have to take his body, like, across the world to bury him somewhere, and you have to have two people playing it. So it seems really fascinating. Um, Outlast I always wanted to play through because I had it for free on gold, never got to it. I wanted to play through Resident Evil 4 again uh, for certain reasons. I meant to do that for um, when we did our remaster conversation, but we never, I never got to it. So that I need to get to obviously soon for specific reasons. Uh, Heavy Rain, never finished. Splinter Cell Blacklist, never finished. Death Stranding, like you, I never got, I never played it yet. And I kind of am nervous because of what I've heard about how it is. Uh, Days Gone, a uh, game that I heard was not that great. And then people kind of after the fact said it's underrated. So I don't like it. I don't so like this. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Horizon Zero Dawn. I started, played for an hour, never got finished with it. The Witcher 3, which I think at some point I'll get to it because they're doing the, the first one remake and all that stuff. Uh, with you, Borderlands 2 and 3. I need Borderlands 2 DLC done, but somebody lost all of their game saves for that, Eric. Uh, so I can't play with them. And uh, Borderlands 3, just like you, I, I, I don't know. Borderlands 1 was just such an important game for me. And then Borderlands 2 was so good that I'm kind of nervous thinking that Borderlands 3 is not going to live up to that. Um. A game that I got with my PS5, Returnal. Gotta get to that. Red Dead Redemption 2, the game everyone was excited about. And then people started to realize that, oh, okay, well, maybe it's not as amazing as we were hoping. Bully, going off of that. A game that Eric loves, and I know he's still mad at me for not getting back into, Control. Um, I really want to beat this before these other Remedy games start to come out. That was one of my COVID games I beat. Yeah. Um, can I was about to say control again. God of War. I'll add Ragnarok as well. I don't own Ragnarok, but once I beat God of War, there's that. Uh, everyone's favorite game of 2020, The Last of Us Part Two. Um, the GTA trilogy, which the GTA trilogy, we know how that went. Uh, and then my final game that's on here is a game that if I just waited for the year, I would have had for free, and that is Lego. Star Wars, the Skywalker saga. There's other games that are on here that are on my consoles that I I can't think of right now. Like I'm trying to go through the Halo games again, and there's a couple other things here and there. Um, but that is my full list that I want to adjust. And why am I gonna adjust it? Because Eric, he didn't just want to talk about our backlogs, he wanted it to be a challenge. So Starting now, on the day that this video comes out, we are going to obviously maybe put our list together better, and then we're going to try and see how many we can do. I don't know if it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one or just if one of us can get a lot done or just to see how much we can accomplish, but I think that gives a good kick in the ass 
to be like, okay, yeah. I guess we have to try and like beat some of these games because now it gives us competition. As him and I know, there's that stupid thing on Xbox where it says who gets the most achievement score. And Eric was off all week and then i took advantage of it and i was like shit i'm gonna beat him again but it's like dumb shit like that that just makes things fun so i think this is gonna kind of give us a nice push to like get a lot of these games done because i think this year is gonna be pretty crazy especially like i know on xbox's front like they you know everyone's made fun of them at the end of the year being like where are all your games and they're like don't worry like we're ready and a lot of these games i want to catch up on because like with control alan wake 2 is coming out i want to finish fallout 4 dlc because i want to play starfield i caught up on all of my uh arcane games no arcane yeah arcane games arcane i don't know why i was saying it like that because uh red falls coming out a lot of these games i wanted to catch up on because i know their next games coming out and i want to kind of keep in that cycle um but yeah i think what we'll do is when we're done with this video we'll probably put a better list together and then as we complete them we'll like do a count maybe we'll do an update in like the middle of the year but we know we're going to do an update like we're going to put out a video like december 31st of 2023 uh and obviously, by the time this video is out, it's already the new year. So maybe we're already catching up on these games, too. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be a fun challenge. This is going to be an interesting, like, looking forward. Because honestly, this is going to help me. Because a lot of these games I want to play, like, oh, like Breath of the Wild. I haven't gotten to that yet. There's a couple other, like, Wii games, like the Metroid Prime games on the Wii I wanted to get to. Because I haven't played them in, like, years there's a lot of games that I'm like, okay, I want to get to and I want to finish. Um, but it's going to be exciting to see how it's going to go. Like, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And I have everything that I need. Like, I got my HDMI cord so I can have more HDMI ports on my TV up here so I can play my PS3 and 360. I got the thing to change the thing for the Wii so it could go into an HDMI port. I have everything I need to just go through and then i think what i'll do is like with when we are talking about during covid i think i'm gonna do like if i'm gonna do like the metal gear games i'll do them all at once if i'm gonna do the kingdom hearts games i'm gonna do them all at once um but yeah we have a challenge um, yeah i'm excited i'm not saying like this is gonna be a competition it's more like no. This is a personal competition from like myself yeah. and I'm it's a Brian. let's see how because here's the other thing we're probably going to be adding games throughout the year. When new games year. come out. Yeah, when yeah. new games come out or like we see something that like drops on Game Pass that's older. Yeah. Like we're going to be like, oh, fuck, we want to play that. Well, yeah, because obviously I'm not saying this to be funny, but we don't know like if the Activision thing goes through with Microsoft, like what are they going to add on there, you know? So mm -hmm. like that'll probably be a whole Every bunch of shit. single Call of Duty. Ever. And then you and I will just play like World at War Zombies, you know, the good old days. The good old days. <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree 100% with Eric. This is not a competition against each other. This is a kind of let's boost each other up. Like we got this and it'll give us the opportunity to really like catch up on a lot. So then we have, we could have the conversations of, oh, we played this. We're not the, yeah, I played God of War Ragnarok. Like, we're, you know, we're not going to have to be those people. So it'll be nice to be a little caught up because I know when you become an adult, it becomes difficult. So now we're trying to catch up on all that. Um, and, you know, be, there's yeah. more. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be fun. And then like planning out times to record gameplay for the Game of the Year cast too, showing in that. Yeah, it's it's when, when there's gameplay that can be recorded, let's say, because, uh, you know, yeah. not every game we talk about can be recorded. Yeah, but all I know is this is going to be a crazier even for the channel. So if you're ready for 2023, like Eric and I are, please like, comment, subscribe, because as much as that is annoying, it is going to help our self-esteem and it's going to help us feel like, you know, we're going to keep going for this year. It's going to be awesome. Uh. But you know what? I think I'm ready. I I had kind of a couple other little things I wanted to try and do before. But you know what? I think I'm saying F it and just 
we're going to start catching up on some backlog games right what's, after this what, video. <laughs> yeah, what what's uh what's a what's a game that's on your backlog that you really are going to say this is my first one. Yeah. Uh, let us know in the comments below. Brian, is there a game that you want us would want to get done right away? If like, there is, know? well, honestly, I would say my top 3 right now are Control. I'd say Control, God of War, and Resident Evil 4. I think those are my three. Because I think Resident Evil 4, I never fully finished. I got like three-fourths of the way through it when I was mm -hmm. younger. But I'd say those three are the ones where I'm like, I got through the God of War games. There's no reason why I can't play that. And then Control, I got into and I really want to get back into, but I just haven't. And then Resident Evil 4, for sure. What about you? What are your top three? Uh, World Ends With You. Uh cyberpunk okay. and the saboteur okay i want to see if my middle school slash high school self would be disappointed just put your mindset in that time like oh but i have enjoyed this game then versus now right right <laughs> well from uh from us here at the warren rascals to the loo and see you at the end of the year even though we'll see you before then <laughs> We're not talking about these till the end of the year, yeah. No.